his life energy, his appetite for life. He was um, a bon vivant. <laughs> you know, he really enjoyed food and, and companionship and he was very engaged in life. I think he, he had a lot to teach everyone about being connected. It's a big deal for a, a mother to speak out like this and yet you are finding the strength to do that. What are you hoping to achieve? I think I'd like other mothers to hear me, to hear or grasp even a bit of the magnitude of the loss. I'm speaking on behalf of my son so that he's not forgotten. Ten weeks ago, Sandy Hook, Connecticut, in the prosperous northeast of the United States, became a place of terror. With the doors to the school locked and students safely in their classrooms, shots rang out. Sandy Hook School. Call is indicating she thinks there's someone shooting in the building. In a matter of minutes, 20 children, including Veronique Posner's six-year-old son, Noah, were slain, along with six of the teachers who tried to protect them. Every day, this hamlet on the outskirts of Newtown faces the reminders. Few of the parents have talked about their loss, but we found Veronique Posner, mother of five, determined that her son would not become just another statistic. It's really heart-wrenching to see your child's name on a headstone. I mean, and it's heart-wrenching in any case, um, but it was just so sudden and a scenario I never entertained in my wildest nightmares. Veronique sent her children to Sandy Hook School on that Friday, big sister Sophia and six-year-old twins Ariel and Noah. Noah's little body was riddled with 11 bullets from Adam Lanza's gun. Veronique, a nurse, forced herself to identify his remains. I felt I owed it to him. I mean, I was his mother in life and I'm his mother after you know, no matter what. Sandy Hook. The words have been seared into my mind. I was there on that first night and for the days that followed, along with hundreds of other media. And even then, despite the ones that had come before, the Virginia Techs, the Columbines, the Tucsons, there was a sense that Sandy Hook was different. Different because the victims were such young, innocent children and Americans were shocked and ashamed. The gun used to kill most of the children and teachers was the AR-15. It can fire more than 50 rounds a minute. Since Sandy Hook, its price has doubled, now in excess of $2,000. It's impossible to know exactly how many are being sold, but dealers say they can't keep up with demand. The AR-15 has been the weapon of choice in a number of massacres, including the Batman movie slaying in Colorado last year. They are weapons of mass carnage that are designed for the battlefield. Um, it, just, um, it, it just has no place in society as I see it. Um, I think they should be um, made illegal and I think there should be compulsory buyback programs of these weapons. Similar to what we saw in Australia. Correct. She's facing a formidable opponent, perhaps the most powerful lobbying group in America, the National Rifle Association. Never fight if you can avoid it. But when you must fight, don't lose. I'm only 
now um, in the aftermath of this beginning to appreciate um, their true power. Um, they're certainly a force to reckon with. Protectors of the Second Amendment, advocating the right to keep and bear arms. On its website, its own news channels and in its magazines, the NRA preaches that its four million members must resist any restrictions on their weapons. We are the NRA, and the NRA is you. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life. Fearful that Sandy Hook might prove a turning point, the gun lobby is staging rallies around the country. They're well attended, an outpouring of patriotism, some of it a little bizarre. The star of the show today in Delaware is the president of the NRA, David Keane. We stand up in a united way and we say, no, you shall not take the freedoms bequeathed to us from us. We will go to the ballot box. We will go to our legislators. We will write letters, we will make phone calls, we will demonstrate, we will organize, we will do everything it is necessary to do to protect those rights and to protect the values that we share. With substantial financial backing from America's arms makers, the NRA spends more than $200 million a year promoting gun ownership. And since Sandy Hook, it's been savaging the gun control proposals of the Obama administration. And by God, he's not going to do it if I have anything to say about it. The NRA has a strong core constituency in rural areas. Many of the people who attended this gun show on a cold winter's day in Virginia say their NRA members were planning to join. In many states, at events like this, you don't need a license to sell a gun. It's a semi-automatic AR-15. And of course, Similar I had this, to the gun that was used in Sandy Hall. Yeah, and I had this made in a 6.8 caliber so I could deer hunt with it because you can't deer hunt with a 223 here in Virginia. People would ask why anyone would need a weapon like that. If I'm in my home and two thieves break into my house and they're both carrying 9mm pistols, I don't want to go against them with a 9mm pistol with a 7 round magazine. Mm -hmm. I want my AR 15 with a 30 round or 10 30 round magazines if I need to, whatever it takes to kill them. It's for home defence. That's for home defence. What would you say then to people who say this weapon has to be banned? They're idiots. You start messing with American guns, that we take it personal. It's an attack against us. It's against us. And our gun rights aren't about duck hunting, they're about protecting us from the government. To better understand how the NRA exercises political power, we headed north to New Hampshire to meet the renowned gun industry insider, Richard Feldman. How many guns do you have, by the way? Oh, a little over 100. Whoa. <laughs> well, every time I'd give a speech at a gun company, they always gave me a gun. So that was I... the thank you gift. Sure, wasn't well, gonna say no to that. For decades, Feldman was a key strategist for the NRA. Its mantra, that only guns guarantee freedom, is based on the Second Amendment to the US Constitution, which he can recite at will. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. It means you have a right to own a handgun for self-protection. Feldman broke away from the NRA a few years ago. He was appalled at its alarmist tactics, cynically designed, he wrote in a tell-all bestseller, to boost membership, raise money and intimidate politicians. There's nothing sinister about the NRA unless you're on the receiving end. So is that why some suggest the letters NRA actually mean never re-elected again? That's exactly right. What message is that sending people? Well, it means that if you uh, mess with the gun owners, 
uh, we're going to mess with you. That's the beauty of democracy. Well. No one knows that better than a senior Republican politician in Tennessee. Deborah Maggot is an NRA victim. Hey, I got one. Yay! This is what people in my state, what people in America do. Oh. Well, it's fun. It teaches you a skill. It teaches you um, a discipline. It's a command over something. Um, it, I think it teaches confidence. So it's rather ironic we're here at a private range, you've been shooting, but you've got a reputation as being anti-gun. That's right, and it's totally unfounded in every way, but it speaks to the power of the uh, gun lobby. The gun lobby is so powerful in America uh, that they dictate how the discussion goes in our politics. The only time it became an issue was when... Deborah Maggot served eight years in the Tennessee General Assembly and was strongly pro-gun. Then the NRA drafted legislation to allow guns to be kept in locked vehicles and insisted that it be made law. So the fear was that the guns wouldn't just stay in they the car. They wouldn't cars. stay in the car because they were just right there, you know. So you could get angry at someone at work or wherever you are and go out to your car, get your gun, come back in and perhaps shoot somebody. Well, in Tennessee, it is political suicide to be pictured with Barack Obama. With the Maggot and her colleagues opposed what they saw as a phony, artificial issue whipped up by the NRA for self-promotion. And they said that I, uh, along with President Obama, we are the anti-gun duo. They came after me. They spent an unprecedented amount of money in a political campaign, in a small house race. They spent around $155,000, the NRA, along with their other allies, uh, attacking me. What, what was the message? The message was I was for gun control, which is a lie. The message uh, was that I was shredding the United States Constitution, which is a lie. The message was I was like President Barack Obama, and that is a lie. Are the president's kids more important than yours? Then why is he skeptical about putting armed security in our schools when his kids are protected by armed guards at their school? We like kids more than we like guns. My right to free speech by blocking My kids camera. are more important than your guns. Well, I'm protecting the rights of your kids and you should We're protecting do your that kids too. and your life. A hundred people from Sandy Hook and Newtown, Connecticut joined thousands of others in Washington demanding tighter gun controls. America's national capital is notorious for gun crime. We can end the gun lobby's free ride. Eleanor Holmes Norton represents the district in Congress. The gun lobby can be stopped, my friends. All they need, all they need is a worthy opponent. You are that opponent. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. These people are looking to Congress to show strength as new gun control legislation is being tabled. This time, we the people are stepping up. This time, we the people will act, we're stepping up, and this time, we will not step back. Yeah! Watching the gun debate from Sandy Hook, Veronique Posner was hopeful that the NRA would understand that there should be some reform of gun laws. I would like to think, though, that they're capable of compromise. Um, I think universal background checks and a federal database, um, that's something that is fairly middle of the road. What is it that's happened that made you think the NRA are so powerful? Well, I, I know they have um, a wide following and that they, they have some lobbying power. Um, I know the gun industry um, since 2005 has enjoyed immunity from prosecution except in the case of malfunction of their weapons. I have to ask, you know, why are they given privileges that are so not really afforded to any other industry? 
NRA stop killing our children. It's the NRA and the, auto, and the assault weapons that are killing our children. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Wayne LaPierre has been running the NRA for 20 years and earns a million dollars a year because he's so successful. Shame on the NRA! Ban assault weapons now! At the first Senate committee hearings on gun control after Sandy Hook, LaPierre went on the offensive. Law-abiding gun owners will not accept blame for the acts of violent or deranged criminals, nor do we believe that government should dictate what we can lawfully own and use to protect our families. LaPierre said no to proposed bans on semi-automatic weapons and high-capacity magazine clips, and no to more background checks for gun buyers. The NRA said no to talking to the ABC. It's a pretty slick website. Oh, yeah. Josh Sugarman has spent 30 years studying the NRA's tactics. The NRA basically lies. And the last sentence in this website says, it is not affiliated with any firearm or ammunition manufacturers or with any businesses that deal in guns and ammunition. And that's just patently untrue. Sugarman says the NRA is little more than a front for its corporate partners, gun manufacturers who sit on the board. And one measure of this is the fact that the NRA today receives tens of millions of dollars from the firearms industry. And that's because they share a common goal. And the common goal is to sell more guns, which from the NRA's perspective, creates the opportunity for more members and more advocates. And of course, for the industry, it just means a uh, better bottom line. Close to six million guns are made in America every year, and it's estimated the weapons and ammunition generate about $6 billion a year in revenue. After every massacre, there's a spike in sales. Is there not some irony that the tragedy at Sandy Hook has been good for the gun industry? Sure, there's some irony in there. Um, but when Americans feel a product they want is potentially threatened and may not be available in the future, uh, watch out, that's when the buying frenzy begins. The firearm industry is in unbelievable shape. If the rest of the American economy was in the shape that the gun industry is in, I don't think we'd have much of a budget deficit to worry about. Two years ago, Gabby Giffords represented Arizona in Congress. That was before she was shot in the head at close range. The assassin killed six others, but Giffords survived. And after two years of painful rehabilitation, she's still relearning how to speak. Violence is a big problem. Too many children are dying. Too many children. Be bold, be courageous. Americans are counting on you. Thank you. Giffords and her husband Mark Kelly, both gun owners themselves, have launched Americans for Responsible Solutions. This time must be different. Something needs to be done. We are simply two reasonable Americans who have said enough. Adding to the pressure for reform, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, which funded this advertisement for the NFL Super Bowl. The mayor's lobby is underwritten by the billionaire New York mayor, Michael Bloomberg. You know, over 600 mayors across the country agree on common sense reforms that would save lives. Add your voice. Go to mayorsagainstillegalguns.org. It's a patriotic thing to do. You can make a giant difference in our country. You know, this and this, keep this, when you look through here, mm -hmm. Keep this at the same height as this. Is when you, that. When you bring it up, on this private range in Tennessee, Deborah Maggot and her friends are obsessive about safety and take pride in their skills. But the reality is that every year, about 30,000 Americans die at the end of a gun. Most are suicides. But on average, a third, around 10,000 people a year, are murdered. A death toll totally out of kilter with the rest of the developed world. The NRA blames everything other than guns. 
primarily the failure to identify and treat people with mental illnesses, also excessively violent video games and movies. Yet it insists politicians should do nothing to infringe the right of Americans to bear arms. Bullies. They use bully tactics to get their way. They know that everyone is afraid of them. What do you personally think is actually achievable on gun reform? Well, it depends on what you call gun reform, but I can tell you this. No one will have the courage to talk about what even those reforms might need to be if they're a Republican, because they'll be too afraid to take on the NRA. Many Democrats, too, are afraid of crossing the NRA, as President Obama knows well. I know this is not the first time this country has debated how to reduce gun violence. But this time is different. Just Starting his final four years in office, in President Obama, having publicly shed tears after Sandy Hook, wants to change America's relationship with guns. Gabby Giffords deserves a vote. The families of Newtown deserve a vote. The families of Aurora deserve a vote. The families of Oak Creek and Tucson and Blacksburg and the countless other communities ripped open by gun violence, they deserve a simple vote. One reason why gun control is such an intractable problem is the sheer scale of ownership. There are 310 million Americans, and it's thought there are just as many guns, and about 110 million gun owners. The culture of gun love is fostered from childhood, and gun makers are increasingly pitching at the young. We met Sean Clark and his sons skeet shooting. This is the place, if, the, if my boys are gonna have exposure to firearms, this is the, definitely the right place to, to have that exposure to the firearms. Yeah, I get to shoot like targets and zombie targets. And what would you like to be able to do? Shoot like the rifles. Is that a pretty important moment for your family when a son first shoots? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. He certainly sees quite a few guns in the video games and on TV, and, and today I think being around them will, will teach him a little bit more of what they're really about. It's ten weeks since the slaughter in Sandy Hook and the initial optimism that it would provoke the biggest changes to gun laws in decades is fading. While Congress might agree on background checks, and reducing high-capacity magazines, what Veronique Posner wanted most was to get semi-automatic weapons off the streets. That appears politically impossible nationally. The NRA and other pro-gun groups are just too strong. I think any change is protracted, incremental and painful. It's hard to know because you're, you're really operating against some very powerful forces. Nighttime is much harder for me, but it's bittersweet because, for instance, last night I had a very um, vivid dream about Noah and it was quite wonderful. Um, it was difficult to wake up and realize the bleakness well, I guess the bleakness of the weather sort of ma matched my mood, that it wasn't real. He was a bit of a philosopher. He asked questions about life and God and what happens after we die. I always called him an old soul. Um, I would always tell his father, you know, I think he's an old soul. And I think some of it came from being a twin too, that ability to coexist because Neither one was dominant. They kind of compromised with each other. Sometimes one got their way, sometimes it was the other. And they just had this beautiful synergy together. And um, he has left such a void. <laughs>